over the years, we often spend quite a bit of money in getting good Wi-Fi for our home or small office. Uh, I keep a lot of my old gear. I dug some of it out. Here's an old D-Link router with a wireless access point built in that supports the Wi-Fi. Kept that. Don't think I'll be using that again. Here's an older one from Cisco Systems, the Cisco Valet. That was also a lot of fun in its day. I also have an Airport Extreme that I absolutely love. It's been doing a great job for many, many years. I no longer use that. <laughs> here is an Airport Express and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, here's a commercial AP from Cisco Systems and Access Point that would be part of a larger infrastructure um, that has its place. Here's a Google Wi-Fi mesh wireless access point. They call it a Google Wi-Fi point. It's one of three. I've got three in my home here that I use for mesh Wi-Fi networks. It's fantastic. Um, here's another high-end or fairly high-end for the home office type of access point as well. It supports some of the newer protocols, including 802.11ax, which they're now calling Wi-Fi 6. So um, Wi-Fi, it's important because we want the convenience of it and we spend a lot of money on it. But what happens if we spend a lot of money on our Wi-Fi access points and routers and such, and yet we still have problems. In this nugget, I'd like to chat with you about one specific thing that we can do to improve our Wi-Fi situation with the gear that we currently have in place. And for those of us who are having this specific problem, which we're going to describe right now, this solution is amazing. Imagine we're going to a grocery store, and this grocery store has three checkout lanes that are currently open. Lane number one, lane number six, and lane number 11. Now, if those are the only three that are open and there's 40 people lined up in line one and there's 40 people lined up in line six and there are zero people lined up in lane 11, to make it more efficient for us, we should move over to that lane to get the better and faster service because there's no wait. Well, in the world of Wi-Fi, we have two major categories of frequencies that we use. One is the 2.4 gigahertz range of frequencies and the other is the five gigahertz range of frequencies. So for our discussion, I'm gonna talk about the 2.4 gigahertz range, but the same concept applies to five as far as getting in a lane that's not crowded. So the only three center channels in the 2.4 gigahertz range that won't overlap with each other for using narrow bands is if we're lined up and centered on channel one. And if we have somebody else next to us who's lined up and centered on channel six, we're not gonna run into them. We're not like in the same lane. We have our own dedicated lane, if you will. And then somebody who's centered on channel 11 is gonna be using these ranges of frequency all in the 2.4 gigahertz range, but they're not walking on top of each other. And the question may come up, well, Keith, if I knew that everybody was using channel one, uh, I would, you know, I'd wanna to move to a less busy channel. Absolutely, yes, but the challenge is we need tools to identify, first of all, do we have a conflict? And also, how is our Wi-Fi doing to begin with? So one of the tools that we can use just to assess our Wi-Fi locally from our mobile devices to the actual router inside of our home or office is a tool called Wi-Fi Sweet Spots. I'll put up a screenshot here so you can look for it in your favorite mobile device app store. And so basically you download this and you can run it and it will tell you the connection speed that you have throughput wise from your mobile device to the router, which is effectively measuring how is your Wi-Fi doing at this moment? So you can take this and walk around the house, find dead spots and identify, whoa, this is going way down to one or two megabits per second, or wow, this is four or 500 megabits everywhere. So that's a great tool to assess, first of all, how is your Wi-Fi doing? Now, secondly, if we identify that there are problems and the Wi-Fi seems to be dipping up and down and changing pretty radically, and there's not a whole bunch of other demand going on in the house, we may have a challenge with us and many of our neighbors conflicting and trying to use the same set of frequencies. So to identify what channels are currently in use, we're gonna use another tool, and there's a lot of free ones out there. The one tool I'd like to talk about that's free on Mac and Windows is a little tool called NetSpot. So I've opened up NetSpot Discover. I'm just using the free edition. It doesn't cost anything. It works on Mac, works on Windows, and I've also got a Wi-Fi adapter in the computer that's running this software. So if we wanted to, we could just sort based on the signal. So I'm gonna click on the signal column here, make sure the arrow is pointing down, and that's gonna put the strongest access points with the strongest signals up on top. And then as we go down the list, they'll get lower and lower in strength. And what we're interested in is, is somebody competing or are we competing with a lot of other people on the exact same frequencies? So I have an access point with our Wi-Fi. That's the one that we're using. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And if I click on channels 2.4 gigahertz, currently this shows that it's centered on channel one. Also, it's not using a narrow band. Normally, it would go from here over with a 20 megahertz wide band of frequencies in that 2.4 space centered on channel one, but this access point is actually using a wide band of 40 megahertz wide. 
In either case, we're centered on channel number one. So if we wanna see our competition, and I'll go ahead and bring this down a little bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a check next to everybody who's 2.4 gigahertz and has a strong signal. So here in the band column right here, there's a 2.4 gigahertz, and there's a 2.4 gigahertz, and there's a 2.4 gigahertz, and there's another 2.4 gigahertz, and another one. Great, and then as the signals get weaker and weaker, I'm not too concerned about those because we're not fighting or competing as much because those other signals are fairly weak. So if we bring up the output here with the channels 2.4 gigahertz tab selected, and also to make it a little bit easier to read, I'll go ahead and click on our Wi-Fi to shade that in. You'll notice that we're competing right here with the center channel of one with some other access points. And what we'd wanna do ideally, if, if nothing out here is being used, we'd wanna take our Wi-Fi and move the center channel over to 11. So in the 2.4 gigahertz range, the three center channels that are intended to be non-overlapping are one, six, and 11. So if one is all tied up and a lot of busy stuff going on, what we'd wanna do is change our access point to move it over to the center channel of 11. So how you change the channel is gonna depend on the wireless access point slash router that you have. There's very often a graphical user interface, you access it with a browser, or if they have an app, you can use the app to do it. In this case, it's the Apple Airport Extreme I put to work on that channel. And so I'm just going into Airport and gonna change the channel to channel 11. And with that change done, I'll click on Done. And in a few moments, it's gonna change its center channel from channel one, where it was, over to a much more open and less crowded field, centering its channel on 11. And there we go, it just happened real time. So now our Wi-Fi is on center channel 11. And if that was the cause for our challenge and our problem with Wi-Fi connectivity, that is gonna help a bunch. Now in a busy environment, there's gonna be a lot of frequencies that are in use. So if we can't have an open channel where nobody else is using it, we might wanna look for one where somebody with a very low signal that we can barely see is using that and then ours will be stronger on top of it. The key is don't pile up with a whole bunch of other access points that have super strong signals on the same center frequency. Choose one that is less busy and that's gonna improve our Wi-Fi performance. And then the third step is to assess again. Take that Sweet Spots app and then once we're on the new channel, go ahead and run it and see if there's improvement with the Wi-Fi connectivity in your house or building based on that change that you made. So even though the default function on many access points is auto, meaning I ought to be able to figure out the best channel to use, it doesn't always choose the best channel. And as a result, by stepping in, looking what channels are used, and then making manual changes could dramatically increase our throughput on our Wi-Fi networks. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.